Hey, good morning. Welcome to this week's Wednesday Word. I'm Evan Carmichael, the pastor here at Arise Church. Appreciate you making the time to join us this summer. I hope this has been ministering to you in the book of Romans. And we see a shift here again. You know, Paul in talking uh, to the believers in Rome about the difference between the, the Jews and the Gentiles, what God did through the Jews, what God was doing in the Gentiles, the rejection of Christ by the Jews opened the door for the Gentiles. And we, we see he, he really did well explaining it. I hope I did it justice. But you see a shift here now in Romans 12, chapter 1, and he says, and so, or therefore, okay? Therefore what? Well, everything else we talked about, go online and check it out. Therefore, because of everything that's happened, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all that he's done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. You know, our bodies today are temples of the Holy Spirit. And you know, when Jesus died, there was a curtain in the temple that separated the Holy of Holies from everyone else. It was a place that only the high priest would go into once a year. If there was sin, they would die. Okay? That's how serious it was. Reverence, being right with God was so important. When Jesus died, what did he do? He reconciled you and me with God. So before that, all of humanity was not right with God. In fact, humanity was an enemy of God because of sin. That's why the presence of God lived in the Holy of Holies. But Jesus, our great high priest, Jesus went in and Jesus made us right. He, he was that bridge between humanity and God. He went in and he, with his blood, forgave us of our sin. And he reconciled you and me with the Lord. And that veil was torn when he died. Because God's presence was no longer going to live in that place. Where was his presence going to live? Well, we were made right with him. His presence could again live in you and me and today our bodies are the temple of the holy spirit it's not a temple made with hands so you see all these churches we're building a church building right now but although we call it a church it's not the temple god's presence lives in you his presence lives in me and we've been reconciled with god and because he lives in our body let's offer our bodies to the Lord. You know, when we offer our bodies, we're not just saying, oh, it's just this body here. That's that's not it. When, when we say we're offering our bodies to the Lord, it's our everything, our spirit, our soul, our body, our mind, our actions, our intentions. We offer all to the Lord. And it says that when we do that, it's truly the way to worship Him. The word uh, worship, the Greek word is latrian. I hope I pronounced that right. And it refers to any ministry performed for the Lord. Our worship, our service, our duty, our life given to the Lord is sacred, sacred service. You know, when you serve, some of you watching this, you serve in church. That's sacred to the Lord. You're giving your body in service to the Lord. Your gifts, your, your abilities, your talents to touch other hearts and other lives. It is sacred service to God. What an awesome thing. Verse 2 says, Don't copy the behavior and customs of the world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. When you look at that word, let God transform you. The Greek word, you know what the Greek word is? It's not just 
the, in the simple form of change. You're not just changing your clothes, all right? You had a black t-shirt on, now you got a white t-shirt. All right, I changed. Uh-uh. The word means to uh, metamorphosis. An actual metamorphosis morphosis, a total change from the inside out. When you think of a butterfly, a butterfly gets to be a butterfly because it goes through metamorphosis. And a butterfly does not resemble at all what it used to be, a caterpillar. Could you imagine the first people that ever discovered that? They probably saw caterpillars, they saw caterpillars. Uh, butterflies but they had no idea they were the same thing when that uh, caterpillar goes into its cocoon there is a complete metamorphosis a totally different looking creature emerges that fat worm is now a butterfly with long legs antennae eyes uh, big wings and that caterpillar that at once just kind of slowly moved along on the on the branch now I guess slowly moves along in the air but it can fly there's a complete change when we come to God you know our old our old nature our old self can never be an excuse for not changing because the power of God if we let it that's the key if we let it, if we apply it to our life, will completely transform us. There will be a metamorphosis into a new creation. And it starts by changing the way you and I think. I have to change the way that I think. I think too small. I think too negative. I think on the wrong things at time. I dwell on the wrong things. I have to change the way that I think. How do I change the way that I think? Well, our minds are made new by His Word, by worship, Christian fellowship, the people we talk to that challenge us, and by prayer. Those things will begin to transform our mind, which will begin to transform our life. See, I don't just want to change my mind. I don't want to just change the color of the of of the drapes in the house. No, I want a complete renovation, a complete change. Give me something new. And it's the same th uh, things in our life. As our mind and as our life is transformed, we will begin to desire God's will, not our own. And when we're renewed spiritually, guess what? We're going to begin to enjoy God's will for our life. I really pushed it a couple of weeks ago about spamming ourselves with the Word of God. We need the Word of God in our life. It will transform the way we think. And when we change the way we think, we begin to transform. We go through a metamorphosis into someone different. If you're sick and tired of your life, you need a metamorphosis. You need a change. Start different habits. Read the Word of God. Pray like you never prayed. Start hanging out with other believers. Get into church. Spend time in worship. It'll begin to transform you. Verse 3, Because of the privilege and authority God has given me, I give each of you this warning. Don't think you are better than you really are. Be honest in your evaluation of yourselves, measuring yourselves by the faith God has given us. Just as our bodies have many parts, and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body, and we all belong to each other. You know pride is wrong? Because if you're prideful in yourself, you're failing to realize that all of your natural gifts and your spiritual gifts are a gift from God, not from ourselves. You know, each member serves functions to serve the body, right? My, my whole body isn't here for my hand. No, my hand is here to serve the body. My foot to serve the body. And you know, it's the same thing with us. If we're all prideful and we think it's about us, we're missing it. We're members of the body, 
to serve the body, to serve the body of Christ. I live to serve. You live to serve. Don't have the attitude that you are here to be served, but rather to serve. That's a Christ-like attitude today. And so as members of the body, with a calling to serve, we see that verse 6 says, in his grace. Don't forget that, in God's grace. We didn't deserve these gifts, but in his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. And these grace, uh, because of this, the grace gifts, or the charismata, grace gifts, are according to God's grace. God has gifted you today I don't know who you are, but I know you're gifted some form or some way. Not because you deserved it, but because we serve a gracious God. And he's gifted us according to his grace. Why are we gifted? Again, not so we can be great. We've been gifted so that we can serve the body. I ask you this question. Are you serving the body with your gifts? Think about that. I hope you can say yes. If you say no, then start serving the body with your gifts. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it's giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, Take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. We see that there are other gifts that are mentioned, including to this, again, not limited to the prophets, teachers, administration, pastors, serving, even the gift of giving. To prophesy is to encourage and to strengthen and comfort the body. To prophesy. If you're going to be people that are going to contribute to bless others, do it gener generously. If you've got the gift of administration to manage, do it diligently. If you're to be merciful, there are people with the gift of mercy. Do it cheerfully. Whatever your gift is today, I pray that you exercise it faithfully, that you use your gift, that your life is submitted to God, that you're being transformed, that you're using the gift as service to the Lord because of all that he's done for you and me. Father, I pray that you stir up the gift today and those watching, stir up their faith. God, people to believe for more, to use more, to step out even when they think they can't do it. I, I wanna say this, when, when we don't wanna serve because we can't do it, that's pride. Because again, we're saying it's about us. But even when we think we can't, but we step out because of the calling we're saying it's not about me it's what god has gifted me with and i put my faith in him so there's no excuse today for us not to use what god has given us to be a blessing and encouragement to the body of christ so father help us to serve with our life surrender to you in jesus name amen check out our website for more info arise.church i love you appreciate you thanks again for tuning in i look forward to seeing you either this weekend at Arise Church, or we'll be back here online next week with another Wednesday Word. Have a great week.